watching the home of old mates, Backyard Tech. Currently we know that Solaris 11.4 is the latest offering from Oracle in the Solaris family line of operating systems. In part one, uploaded earlier, we did the initial, the initial I'm sorry, installation of Solaris 11.4. Welcome to part two of the system setup and product review video here on Solaris 11.4, this one. Let's give it the Backyard Tech Channel treatment, gonna have a sticky beak at it. Linux. Maybe Unix. Windows. This is the Backyard Tech system setup and product review. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to part two of the system setup and product review video regarding Solaris 11.4 and I thought it better to split it into two. Um, this, this is just ridiculous, it really is. All right, so here we are with the text login. It did do what I wanted it to do and that's dropped me straight into a shell environment, which is ideal. Let's log in. And there we are. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go CD slash, get into the root directory, and top it. Okay, so the CPUs are at 99%. We're using 1% of the kernel memory. So it's using 2 gig of memory at the moment and 2 gig of the swap file. Huh, okay. We've got 65 processors, 64 of them are sleeping. So it's a lot heavier than I remember it. I've only got six gig of RAM and it's already using two gig. I shudder to think what'll happen once we get it on the thing. All right, let's get out of that. Okay, issue do PKG update. So we it it it's a lot heavier than I remember it. A hell of a lot heavier than I remember it. When I was running Solaris 10 a while ago, it it was light. Much lighter than this. fast lookup database. This is very different to what I remember Solaris 11 Express or 11.1 .1 being. Interesting to note that by default Solaris now drops you into this. Okay. So I think the one thing I want to go and do is have a look at something. There's a fair bit in there. More in there than I thought there would be. Ah, firewall. There's DACP.
disk top. All right. Now, let's just see how big this is. Remembering it's GNOME 3, 357 packages to download by the looks of it. So you still don't, it's probably lighter than GNOME 3 from Linux at only 357 packages. See, what you do is if you're going to run this on a server, you don't bother with a GUI. Even if you get a server that has a VGA output, you don't need it with Solaris under a server environment. In a desktop environment, it's possibly a little different. And depending on how long this takes, we might cut the video for a little bit. We'll just have to see. My, look, I know people are gonna yell and scream at me for this because they always do. So we've got nearly a gig to down, oh good grief, you guys can't actually see that, hold on. Let me put myself up here a moment. So you can see my internet's rather slow today. My internet is actually slow, it's ridiculously slow today. So we have 61,930 files to get of just over 950, 958 meg. That is huge. What I was gonna say before we cut the video here, I know this sounds stupidly inane and I know this sounds wrong my preference would have been for Oracle to run Sun for you through to 11.1 at least. That would have been perfect. Jeez, my internet's slow. Look at that, 500K per second. That's terrible. There's, here comes Gnome Docs, okay. So she, it's heavy. It is very, very, very heavy. I'm gonna have to head off again shortly. My theory is I would like to have seen Oracle hang on to sun for you to at least Solaris 11.1 for Spark. I know they ran, I think it was sun for V through 11.1, but it would have been nice to get 11.1 with sun for you. Now I don't have the smarts to add the sun for you kernel basis into 11.1 because I think the actual bottom end of it's different but it would have been handy. That's just my opinion. It would have been handy. But Oracle and their infinite wisdom. Oracle and wisdom. It's a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? Sixty-one thousand nine hundred and thirty files. Nearly a gig of stuff to transfer. Jeez, this is slow. Three and a half meg per second. Talk about slow. All the 
of getting started, docs. It looks like what happens here. Okay. In a server environment, you wouldn't worry. Okay. It'd be, I'm, I'm interested to see what you get with Solaris with the DE if you're going to use it as, as, as a daily driver, basically. Undoubtedly, this will take some time to actually install, which is not necessarily ideal. <laughs> it's going to take a long time. A very long time. I must say, just before I um, stop this video, because I, I have a suspicion this is going to take a long time to put together. Um, I want to thank everybody for the support of the Backyard Tech channel here on YouTube. Um, I've met some very lovely people who have become personal friends of mine. Um, the support for the channel is great, but guys, please go and support the channels that are in my featured channels list as well. Make sure you sub to them too. Um, I, you know, I do this not just for my mental health, even though sometimes we've seen that YouTube can adversely affect my mental health. But I do it because I actually enjoy it. You know, I, I, I like, you know, passing on my experiences and stuff to those and the support's fantastic. When I started the, my little corner of YouTube here, I did it just to see if I could make the channel work better than my old channel, which it has. Um, hello, NVIDIA. Oh, now that's interesting. Wow. NVIDIA's now in Solaris 11.4. Jeez, it has changed a bit, hasn't it? Um, as I said, guys, look, you know, the, the, the support is fantastic. And I thank you. I thank everyone. I, our nightly convos are really good. All right. I love our nightly convos, even though, you know, you do get the odd whack job that joins us with inane questions. Um, but you know, the whole thing is, is that you know, I do it because I enjoy it. And it keeps me occupied, basically. Even though there's a lot of people who don't agree with me, which is pretty much nearly everybody. There's a lot of people who just rip on me all the time. And there are those who actually enjoy the way I do things and what I have to say. Technically, you could call me a full-time YouTuber, yeah. <laughs> because that's, what, that's all I do every day is make YouTube videos when I'm actually home. But I want to thank everyone for the support. Wow. Now, the Solaris purists out there are going to call me all sorts of multiple four-letter word combinations and various references to other humans, shall we say, for doing this, especially the seven or eight people who try to control everything I do. Um, but the idea behind this is I want to do it. I can't run Solaris as a server at the moment. It would conflict with what else I've got set up. Okay. So the idea behind this is to have a sticky beak at it. And as you can see, right off the meat of the back at the, at the shell, you don't get a lot. There's not much you can do other than set it up primarily as your server and start getting it organized. Now, obviously, I can't do that because it'll conflict with Neth server right off the meat of the bat and cause chaos and mayhem. But uh, I want to see the differences. Gnome is just too bloated now. Um, but I do thank everyone. 
you know, I started this just for a bit of fun and then it became literally a full-time job for me. Um, obviously with me, you know, not able to work due to the medication I take, you know, this gives me something to do. And the support from over 3,000 subscribers, I hate to say it, but it, it really does mean a lot. It really does. And the convos, I, I actually enjoy our convos. Even when there's only a couple of us around or 11 or 12 or 13 of us, it doesn't matter. My UK friends, my US friends, my European friends, my you know, those of us who join me from around the world every night, it, it, it's fantastic, you know. I enjoy it. Don't forget about the end of year prize to everyone for the Medal of the Master of Understatements. You get one of those made for you. So if you've got a YouTube channel, you can display that, not this thing. <laughs> Not that. One of these made by the other half. So don't forget, Medal of the Master of Understatement giveaway this year. And if you do have a YouTube channel, you can put that with it. The other half will design it per your YouTube channel or whatever. Well, I think I'm gonna cut the video here, guys. And uh, we will um, we'll come back later because this is going to take a long time. We're not even halfway through it yet, and my internet is running like a pig. Those of you out there who run Solaris on a daily basis, this video is not for you. All right, this is for those who are interested in how Solaris looks between the shell environment and the DE and the difference in resources pulled between the two. Now I've got a horrible feeling putting GNOME 3 onto this is going to make it catastrophically heavy. We'll wait and see what happens. Alright guys, I will cut the video here and uh, we will be back hopefully shortly ready to log into GNOME 3. We'll see you soon. Alrighty, well I'm back. Uh, I don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> um, I left here at 10.30, it's now 25 to 12 Wednesday morning. Let's, uh, let's see what this does. I just had to duck out for an hour. Well, I think something's failed because uh, I'm not sure this is actually going to work, but we'll soon find out. We'll also soon find out whether it actually reboots properly. We'll also find out if whether old mate drops his mobile phone. pulling oh look at that will you it's just it's I look at Solaris 11.1 .1, and that was light simple quick to install 11.4 you really need a gutsy machine to run it now in my personal opinion, because it is just ridiculous. Let's do a hard. Oh, it's actually rebooted. 
Yay. <laughs> Finally rebooted. Alright. What are you doing? Oi. Alright. Well, it picked up 16 by 9. That's a good thing. Let's see what we get. Alright, let me just move myself. Don't need to see the Oracle stuff. Let me move myself down, back down to there. Let's get rid of that. Well, the time's out. What the hell is this thing doing? Well, definitely heavy now. Let's have a look at it. Very, very heavy. We have 132 processors, one, uh, one running. Now look how much memory we've got for you. So it's nearly using... It's using 4 gig. Over 4 gig of RAM now. I'm going to use HTOP because I prefer HTOP. Doesn't have HTOP. Okay, fine. All right, so let's see what we get with Solaris these days. So we've got Firefox. We've got NVIDIA drivers. Vim, Xterm, Thunderbird, Tweak Tool, Video Player, Settings. Where's the, uh, I wonder where the Package Manager is now. Screen Recorder, is it? Oh, Screen Reader. Hmm. Okay. Very, very, very basic. There's very little in it now. Tweak tool. Let's get rid of that bloody screen reader. So here's our desktop. Icons on desktop on. Home and mounted volumes. Extensions. Startup applications. Top bar. Show seconds. Windows. Workspaces. Hmm. I'm not, I've got to be honest, I don't like it. It's very heavy. 
Mm. Holy moly. Icons are massive. Yeah, I'm not... 6 gig of RAM, I would have thought Solaris would be good. But it's definitely not. So... And there's G at Geez, you don't get much, do you? Let's have a look at Firefox. Look at the size of the icons. Uh, I'm not. Not now. Alright, let's go to menu bar. Now, theoretically, I believe this will be ESR. I think. 52.9, 32-bit. 30, That's interesting. Um, I'm not, I'm not liking it. call it now PKG install package manager no PKG search It's very slow. So it looks like with PKG, I can't even find, just bear with us guys, I'm going to see if I can find out what the package manager system is for Solaris 11.4, 11 hold on a tick. Alright, I think I found what I'm looking for. Add the exception. Confirm. So. This is the dashboard. see here we're at 80 percent of the memory doesn't give you much does it i 
By the looks of this, the package manager that used to be with Solaris 11.3 and that is not there. Which ain't fantastic, but... It's very, you know, I'm not, I don't like it. It's very slow. I mean, that's partly because GNOME 3 is so bloated in this, it's not funny. <coughs> But I've got no idea where the package manager GUI is. I'm not blind, am I? I mean, it, it is, it's not there. Which is interesting. There's a system monitor. I, I'm not, I'm not liking it at all yeah. I'm not keen and there's very little in it as well there is very little in it but I'm just surprised that there's no Either I can't find it, Remember under Solaris 11 through or 11, Solaris 11 Express through to 11 through, you'd have the package manager up here. I wonder if I got VLC. I doubt it. You don't even get, I mean, the only text thing you get now is gvim and gedit. That's it. So there's your programming. There's vim. liking it if I'm honest but I mean that's that's really all you get now there's not much in Solaris these days not much at all but that's that's basically it you get a deconf editor let's go have a look at files for a moment Other locations. Oh, other locations. So it's still, even with um, even with the uh, install, it's used nearly six gig. So it's still a pretty small install, even with GNOME three. But yeah, it's, it's not nice. I don't like it. Honestly, I do not like it. Give, give, give me everything from Solaris 10 to 11.3 any day and I'll be happy. 
this no I'm not even sure you could use it properly actually there we are sticky bag at Solaris 11.4 with gnome 3 and she's heavy I mean let, let's see how much she's using so I had a 6 gig she's used nearly near enough damage to 90% of the RAM that's heavy and the CPU usage is nothing but it is it's very heavy there we are a look at Solaris 11.4 don't think I'll be running it there we are anyway that's it for the day here at Backyard Tech I'll catch you tonight for the confi have a good one cheers this has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.